What is the worst thing your former spouse did after divorce? Story 1. My ex-husband started dating his stepmom, who has been in his life since he was 11 years old. His stepmom and he are still together almost five years later. His stepmom confessed her love for my ex to his dad a few years ago, and they have since divorced. The dad is now dating a 21-year-old. I know all of this because I'm still close friends with my ex-husband's sister. It's so messed up and I'm so grateful I left him when I did. I won't say where it all unfolded because small towns, but they are from New Jersey, and I'm not. The father and my ex-husband don't speak, basically. Everyone in that family, except stepmom obviously, hates my ex-husband and has cut him mostly out of their lives. It may have been a little grooming, but if you met my ex-husband, you'd see he's all around a plotting, manipulative, crappy person. So I think it was the other way around. He constantly talked during our marriage about how hot she was. It kind of sounds like he was groomed. That's freaking awful, and I do feel sorry for you for having to go through that. But at the same time, I am seriously side-eyeing that stepmother. How the hell can you know a child since they're 11 and develop a romantic slash erotic attraction to them? That's very wrong. That's incestuous and definitely grooming behavior if I've ever heard of it. I know he was an adult when he decided he loved her back, but think about the dynamic. She must have been in his head for a long time. Ick. I hope I don't get voted down for this, but I probably will, but imagine if the roles were reversed. What if a stepfather who had met a stepdaughter when she was 11 professed his love for her? I don't think people would think to make silly jokes about it like I'm seeing here. I had a friend whose grandfather had been married three times. The last wife was like 20 years younger than him. When his grandfather died, his dad married her. I asked him, what did he call her, grandma or mom? He said he called her grandma. He said they had to go to another state to get married because it wasn't legal in Connecticut. He was a strange guy, but I always loved this story. It sounded like something you'd see on Mari Povich. Story 2. My ex-husband told me I could leave my stuff in our house while I found somewhere else to stay. I assumed this was a goodwill effort to keep things as amicable as possible between us. When I went to get my stuff, she had burned it all, so that was rough. My ex told me we could keep what I couldn't carry in a closet and when I paid for the pod in a month or so, he'd load it in as a last favor. We'd both agreed to the divorce and filed it after going over it together. As amicable as a breakup could be. He had a girlfriend. I was going across the country home. I was upset and heartbroken, but nothing had been vindictive to that point. Surprise, the pod was a dumpster, and my stuff was in it the moment my ass was in a plane seat home. I will forever regret not putting my mementos in my suitcase and just bringing the clothes I could wear. The only thing I can't forgive or forget is knowing the photos of my great-grandmother, my baby quilt, the jewelry box my dad gave me, all in a dumpster. It's been 10 years and I still cry about it. I am so very sorry that happened. On the flip side, I told my ex-husband I'd let him leave a lot of his stuff, and he did. It's been 15 years and I still have some of his stuff because he's still just as lazy as he was then. I wound up shredding a lot of the paperwork he left here 10 years after the divorce. I even called him twice a week before that. Every time he said he'd be by to get it, he never came. So yeah, it's gone now. He tried to bring it up at a child support hearing six months ago and the judge just rolled her eyes when I showed her the texts as proof that I'd held on to it all for 10 years. I'm so glad I'm not with him and miserable anymore. Oh, well, mine had the police waiting. Came home from work with two squad cars waiting for me after I said I wanted a divorce on my way out the door that morning. Spent the next day in jail and came out to find all my property was hers now and I couldn't go back home due to a restraining order based on lies of false abuse. She sold my laptop and all my school supplies and even my dead grandpa's pistol to the pawn shop or wherever. Several days after the fact, I was waiting outside of the apartment complex that I used to live at while on the phone with that non-emergency dispatch line. I'm just waiting for a police escort so that I can retrieve some of my personal property like clothing and hygiene products. I was on hold for over two hours, and then, when the police finally showed up, they just arrested me again. We were waiting too close to the building in question, apparently. Story 3. While we were still married, she got pregnant with the guy she was cheating on me with who is also married to someone else. She has this idea that he's going to leave his wife and they're going to get married. She got a lawyer and filed for divorce. I got a lawyer too. The only thing is that he works for his wife's father, who is setting him up to take over when daddy retires. He realizes that getting a divorce means his cushy career is over. 
confesses everything to his wife and begs for her forgiveness. His wife takes him back and he cuts off my wife. Seeing that her dreams of living with her BF are over, she claims that I'm the father, which is impossible because by that time, we hadn't had sex for more than a year before conception. This does not stop her from telling everyone who will listen that it's my kid. She has her lawyer drop the divorce proceedings. I tell my lawyer to start them with me as the plaintiff and that I want to dispute paternity. I moved out. She starts stalking me, shows up at my job and tries to get in. I work as a civilian in R&D at a military base. The MPs do not take any of her stuff and wind up detaining her when she tries to run past the gate. She calls me at work to bail her out or something. I tell her that whatever she's done, it's not my problem and hang up. I was able to get a restraining order, which she violated repeatedly. She asked for everything, both cars, the entire house, the contents, savings, my retirement account, etc., plus seven years of spousal support. I offered no support and half of the assets. If she wanted a house, she'd have to buy me out and refinance in her name only. When the kid was born, she tried to put my name on the birth certificate anyway, but I'd already successfully disputed paternity, so that didn't go over well. She had to go after her lover boy, who was definitely less than happy to see her. In the end, we split the assets 50-50, sold the house, and she got no spousal support. I don't know if she was able to get money for the kid from her lover or not. She called me a few times after the divorce, wanting to get together and talk. The calls were in violation of the restraining order, but I never reported it. About six months after the divorce, was final, I was offered a new job on the other side of the country. I took it and never told anyone outside of my family where I was going. Almost all of our friends believed her when she claimed the baby was mine and made me out to be the asshole, so I didn't really feel the need to tell them anything. Life is better now. Not a divorce. My grandpa was on his deathbed. My girlfriend knew. I got the call that he died, and I showed up at her house in tears. She was screwing someone else. Yesterday, I sent that person screenshots proving we were in a relationship, and found out she was seeing her longer than I knew of. They stayed together. I got a go F yourself and was blocked by lots of people. No idea what she even told them. She thinks it's my loss. I don't believe in karma but in the less than 48 hours since, I got pre-approved for a ridiculously good home loan, met a cute attorney and got a call that a place lost paperwork and I didn't need to pay them now. My life without her is better. My life since her is going amazing. Story four. She removed the retaining clips from my windshield wipers, but put the wipers back on the arms. First storm after I got my car back from her, the driver's side wiper flew off the car on Interstate 40. Good times. Wacky slash random slash petty stuff like this cracks me up just because it's so... Who would think of that? Reminds me of when my mom left a crappy ex years and years ago. My friends and I, we were all about 13 or 14, stole the batteries out of everything in the house that we could find, and the 1, 7, and 13 balls from his pool table. That's it. This reminds me of that kind of stuff. Although the wiper thing is considerably more dangerous. Yikes. Oh, my old neighbor pulled this on me too. He and his girlfriend would come home from the bar and have wild screaming sex on weeknights from about 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. It'd wake us up and cause my wife to yell at me to make it stop. So I'd pound on the wall and ring their doorbell. They'd ignore me and just keep boning until they were done. But then one rainy morning after probably the worst night we ever had, I went to drive to Costco or something. And within about two minutes of getting on the freeway, both windshield wipers came flying off. I was pretty certain I knew who did it. Story five called me and pretended he had been hit by a car while we were talking. He even tried to voice the crowd that had gathered around his body. God awful acting, but pretty funny listening to him try to mimic a woman's voice. Points for trying to be inclusive, I guess. I think he was trying to get me to relive my trauma of being on the phone with a friend who actually had been hit by a car while we were talking. Too bad he didn't realize that hearing the real thing is worlds different than hearing a dumbass try to act it out. This is hilarious. My ex-boyfriend also faked being hit by a car after our breakup, but at least was smart enough to do it via text rather than trying to act it out on the phone. I asked him to send me a photo of himself in the hospital, of his hospital bracelet, or any Thing that would prove he was actually in the ER. He didn't respond for about 20 minutes, then sent a selfie of himself standing outside of the hospital that was, what a coincidence, almost exactly 20 minutes away from his favorite bar. I questioned why he wasn't inside the hospital since he'd only claimed to have arrived there 45 minutes ago, and he had claimed to have already been evaluated, treated, and released without any discharge paperwork he could show me. My ex pretended to slip away from an overdose on the phone to 
me after I left him. He just stopped talking. I hung up and my sister rang his mom at her place of work to tell her what had happened, and she just didn't seem bothered. Either she didn't care if her son was dying or she knew what he was up to. To be honest, it could have been either of the two. My ex rang me later that day to have a go at me for worrying his mom at work. I broke the news to him that she didn't seem bothered. Awful abusive family. A lot of them. Four years free. Story 6. Stalked me for five years. Would make fake social media profiles to try and follow me, which I would block endlessly. And would try to find where I worked so that she could talk to me. This lady cheated on me with seven different men two months after we were married. I kicked her ass to the curb and made her sign the court papers. When we had our day in court, she cried in the judge's office while I just wanted to get this done. After my dad was with me, he threw $50 at her and told her to change your last name. Good guy pops. I haven't seen or heard from her in about five years, thank goodness. My ex cheated on me the week my mom died in the hospital. She spent a year and a half trying to get in touch with me. She would call my old work and make fake accounts trying to message me on Facebook. It was insane. She later sent a certified letter explaining that she was sorry that she did what she did and that she aborted our child, wanted me to meet her somewhere so that she could apologize face to face. She already married some other guy that she had children with and was still trying to get in touch with me. I never understood her. My poor old mother had this happen. Not poor exactly, but he would relentlessly stalk her and send her gifts and cards, caused her to need blood pressure tablets, all because he was a controlling asswad. She has retired now, but he would want her to do the bookwork, laundry, dishes, and everything just because he smoked and drank too much, his body was literally dying. It got to the point that the neighbors would be on the lookout for his van, as well as our family, and he would take no as an answer. The good thing is my mother had strong sons and neighbors willing to tell him to F off, or whatever. Fortunately, whatever never happened. Story 7. The final straw that led to the divorce got drunk and drove her car into the middle of the desert, sent her friend a picture of the GPS and said I didn't love her, so I wouldn't come and look for her. She wouldn't answer my calls, but kept calling her friend saying I didn't care. I looked for two hours before going back home because I needed to work in the morning. She came home and started banging things around and came into our room and threw her phone at me saying I didn't love her, punched me in the face multiple times, and went to jail. After I filed for divorce, she lost it. CPS wouldn't let her kids stay at the house because of the DV charge against her, so they stayed at her parents. She purposefully stayed at the house so that I couldn't see my kids. I refused to be alone with her for fear that she would hurt herself and blame me, so I always went to the house with someone if I needed anything. She got tired of this and decided to just remove everything from the house while I was at work. I mean everything that wasn't in my kids' bedrooms she took out of the house. Curtains, ceiling fans, all of the furniture minus the dining table that I don't think she had room for. I thought, well, this sucks, but at least she's gone, so I changed the locks. She broke in and stole the locks the next day while I was at work, left nothing but the holes in the doors to swing open in the wind, took the window locks and cut the power cord to the garage door opener, took the blender that I borrowed from my mom and popped the air mattress that I borrowed to sleep on. Then she flipped off the main breaker to the house, swore to the judge that someone else must have done it. My ex was this level of crazy. So abusive. It was so far beyond absurd that our mutual friends thought I was making it up. It was crazy how mental she had become. She finally got arrested when she assaulted me for like the third time, but a friend was a witness and called the police. The DA dropped the charges the next day. I was the third lover she'd been arrested for assaulting in her life. She shamelessly lied her butt off and won custody of our son, then moved two states away. Like everything she did was specifically to cause as much emotional damage as she could. Story 8 kidnapped my three boys from my house when I went on my first post-divorce date. Our loved and trusted babysitter was with them. I left dinner ready and the kids were bathed and already in their jammies. Left for the movie theater when I got a text from my babysitter that she was sorry for not doing the dishes after dinner. So I texted back, that's okay, I can do dishes later, but you've got a couple of hours as well. The movie hasn't started yet. She was at my home as my ex-husband had shown up lied and said he was supposed to have the boys that night and that I had said it was okay. I was livid. I knew he was a bit crazy, but I had no idea he was capable of this. I stepped out of the theater, called him, and he said, if you are going to be dating strangers and endangering the lives of my kids, I will take them. WTF. So I called the police. They did a report. We went to court and he was found in contempt for violating our parenting plan. If you don't mind asking, what happened once he was found in contempt? 
my sister's BF is in a similar situation, so I want him to know he doesn't have to do whatever his son's mom says or does. He was such a jerk, but once the court got involved, he chilled out. It's easy to bully the mother of your kids. It's not as easy to bully a judge. It took a while, though. He stopped paying child support after that to punish me for a year. Kept lying, stringing me along, paying a little here and there, but it ended up being thousands he owed when I sat down and added it all up. So I finally had the state garnish his wages. This enraged him. Tons of harassing slash threatening texts. How dare he have to help pay for his kids. He started brainwashing the kids. So back to court we went contempt again for non-payment of child support and they slapped interest on top of it for me. His lawyer cost him 15000 on top of it and he got fined for the harassment and had to pay for my lawyer. Then he finally chilled out. He also got his second DUI during all of this, and I'm sure that wasn't cheap. Bullies don't have much power to legally abuse you without money. Have your brother get an annual calendar and write down all custody slash visitation time and keep careful track of money exchanges and any other texts. Texts and emails are admissible in court. It is very difficult to go back through dates, times, percentage of custody after the fact. I'm so sorry for your brother. Make sure he follows their parenting plan to a T and doesn't harass or drop to her level at any time. With crazy ex-co-parents, you just focus on your kids and being the best parent you can be. The ex will usually destroy themselves without you needing to veer from the high road. Story 9 After years of telling me she wanted a child, that she wanted to be a mom, that her life's dream was to be a stay-at-home mom, she got pregnant with the first guy she slept with while we were getting divorced and put the kid up for adoption, even before it was born. This was a long-standing thing with her. She always wanted something. Car, house, dog, cat, marriage, etc. And the second she got it, she immediately hated it. I do know a few people like that. One person said, I want to be a photographer, freelance. Buy me a $10,000 camera, stand, etc. Guy. Please join a job in a photo studio, work for about six months to a year to figure out if you really like that job. She got upset and the person was labeled a bad guy. One other guy sponsored a camera slash stand and reflector. Guess what happened? After two months of clicking, after one year, all stuff went into deep storage. After two years of costly, stand reflectors were tossed as garbage. Only the camera remains for two to three days a year. People can't handle even the basics of self-discovery and financial risk. Sounds like my husband. One of the things I love about him is how many interests he has, but also it means finding very expensive impulse buys delivered to the porch because he felt like being a DJ or photographer or computer engineer for five minutes. I'm honestly not sure how to curb this habit without sounding belittling. Let me tell you, I am also like this. I call myself a serial hobbyist. The only way to make it work is to get on a budget and make sure to stick to it. Find something you want to do, but you don't have the money. Tough. Stick it out. Sell some of the other hobbies stuff to finance the new thing. Photography, laser engraving, CNC machining, back to photography for a bit, woodworking, model making, back to woodworking, building websites, etc. These are all things that cost money that I really don't do a lot of lately. I have maxed out credit cards doing this stuff. Now I don't have credit cards anymore. Story 10. She got custody of our three kids, got 70% of my take-home pay for child support, requiring me to move into the barracks. I was in the USAF. Then she immediately moved out of state without telling me, despite the divorce decree requiring my consent, all but guaranteeing I would have no contact with my kids. That's not the crazy part. The crazy part is just a few years later she decided she didn't want to be a mother anymore, so she signed up with a carnival. I think she had the hots for one of the ride operators and left the girls on their own. With Without telling me or the girls beforehand, she called my oldest daughter a few days after leaving to tell her to call me. They hadn't called me before that because they had apparently grown accustomed to their mother disappearing for days at a time. This was decades ago. My children are all grown and married with their own children. They all learned after coming to live with me that I wasn't the monster their mother had brainwashed them to believe I was. And they all agreed to be adopted as adults by the light of my life, my wife, whom I would never have met if I hadn't been divorced. Only one of my children has any contact with her mother, mainly because my daughter still lives near where she grew up. That's where her husband and his family live, so that's where she'll stay. The best outcome of all, all of my children had the best best example in the world of how not to be a mother, and consequently all five of my grandchildren are having the best childhoods possible. 
God, how hardcore the family court system really goes after the father, if he is in the military, is mind-boggling. I was in the US Navy and my ex was awarded 40% of my gross pay in child support, and the judge included my BAH, which is illegal by the way. Also, he allowed her to move my daughter to another state and set it up where I would have to pay all of the traveling costs to see my child. On top of it all, he awarded her legal fees, meaning I would have to pay her lawyer on top of my own. During the court hearing, he straight up said to me, Mister, you are getting on my nerves. My lawyer and I had to pick our jaws up off the floor. It was insane. Like you, it was decades ago. My daughter has a relationship with me now and has ghosted her mother. She learned that everything her mom said about me and my side of the family was a lie. California? Maybe it was the same asshole judge. I fired my attorney after the temp custody hearing. I represented myself when I went in for the final hearing. I brought all my pay stubs and my bank statements and showed them to the judge. He laughed when her lawyer asked the judge for me to pay her legal fees. With what? He asked. She spent all his money when he was deployed, which she had. My revenge on that trouser snake came when she left town after the divorce was final. She didn't tell him she was leaving either, mainly because she owed him a lot of money. Story 11. Before divorce, he established a pattern of asking me to sleep with someone else, usually MFF threesomes, usually friends of his, mine or ours, getting increasingly demanding and moody until I conceded, then reacting with extreme insecurity, jealousy and possessiveness, and need for reassurance afterward until it happened again. It destroyed me as well as all of my in-person friendships, and I still don't understand why he needed to go through that psychodrama over and over, or why I didn't leave sooner. To clarify, there's nothing wrong with swinging, polyamory, or ethical non-monogamy, but he really just wanted an on-demand porn service and couldn't take no for an answer, and could not stand the thought of me having feelings for anyone other than him, yet consistently thought I was waiting to cheat on him or abandon him. Shortly before I filed for divorce, he broke into my apartment twice. Once because he wasn't done talking, and then because the apartment complex director told him I couldn't legally kick him out of the apartment. Sexually assaulted me while I was sleeping, called the cops and DCF because I blocked him on Messenger after close to 24 hours of non-stop texting from him, and chose to publicly throw a couple of punches and an energy drink at the still-concussed TBI survivor he'd chosen as my most recent sex partner, as if any of this was that person's fault. Then he assaulted me in the backyard while refusing to leave and told the police I had attacked him. I filed a restraining order and divorce on the same day. Four months after our divorce was finalized, he was granted full custody of our three kids for every school vacation. He decided to move halfway across the country to live with his mother. She's still taking care of him. His kids aren't particularly interested in talking to him and haven't seen him in over a year. I offered to pay for him to stay here over the summer so that he could see them, but he said nah. This is a fair reflection of his level of engagement with his kids prior to divorce, too. I don't doubt that he loves them, but he rarely chooses to spend time with them because it's stressful. The cops, lawyers, Office of Child Support employees, and the judge have all responded the same way to his endless victim spiel. A tired sigh, a roll of the eyes, he continues to think his situation is everyone else's fault and totally unique. He follows me here and has quoted some of my posts in court. Hi Brian. Story 12. My ex has done a ton of weird stuff. Thankfully, most of it was not aimed at me, while we were separated and working on our divorce. He would whine to me about relationship issues, with my cousin, whom he'd had an affair, and for whom he'd left me. Mind you, he'd moved in with, and not just her, but her common-law husband, and then was upset by how many other boyfriends she had. This is my cousin who has had more baby daddies than she's had babies. Two of her offspring are simultaneously half-brothers and cousins. She's never been known for her monogamy, in other words, but he claimed to have been in love with her since they were children, and this was magically supposed to make her return his affection. Among the best witnessed from a distance bits of this nonsense were him getting jealous of her visiting her husband and running her off the road in his work van, and generally hanging around screwing her instead of taking jobs, to the extent that trainees were making more money than he was after he'd been there more than a year, and he was eventually invited to resign or be fired. Then there was the time he was doing armed security, and angry at how taking our children on a first date to Austin, he expected to be allowed to stay over at this woman's apartment with his children and her children, and she was rightly horrified at the whole thing. Didn't go over well. Had an argument with his girlfriend at the time, not my cousin, but the ex-wife of a different cousin, and drove to her house in his work vehicle to threaten her with a gun. 
This resulted in a firing, a restraining order, and loss of his right to carry a gun. Then, there was the girlfriend who insisted that if he really loved her, he'd move into the homeless shelter with her. So he fabricated being kicked out of his parents' house and spent the requisite month sleeping outside of the shelter's patio before intake. Then spent years longer than the relationship living in the shelter, only finally leaving to move in with a woman he'd met a month earlier, after ostentatiously asking our children's permission. As you can imagine, they felt they had no choice. Basically, it's been 13 years of reeling from one relationship to the next, all overlapping and the kids pulled into them from the very first second. He is currently trying desperately to find another girlfriend to move in with as the current one is kicking him out to move to Virginia with a new boyfriend of her own. This after some time of subjecting the kids to loud arguments over his porn addiction and their dead sex life, and naturally blaming me for the fact that his two oldest children both refused to talk to him at all. Two of my shortcomings as a wife, by the way were being too classy. He quoted Confederate Railroad to me and not providing the drama he felt requisite in a relationship. Story 13. We were living in a different state and she wanted to move back to her home state a year into our marriage. I really had nothing tying me down in that state, so I was down for moving if that's really what she wanted. It had been about six months into the move and she cheated on me with a coworker while I was working full time and trying to finish up my bachelor's degree. She tells me that she didn't feel the same way about me and that she needed to move out to do some thinking. It's driving me insane trying to think about what could have gone wrong. I had a suspicion about that coworker, but I didn't have any proof. I checked our phone account online and sure enough they were talking every night after work while I was working. I followed her one time and sure enough she was going to this guy's house. I confronted her about it and she finally fessed up. So they continued dating after we finally divorced and I was able to move on with my life. She ends up getting pregnant by this guy and he disappears before their baby is even born. Karma definitely came back to bite her after the hell she put me through all alone in a new state with no friends or family around. Story 14. This was from even when I was a kid and my parents were going through a divorce. My dad was a total sociopath, manipulative, physically and emotionally abusive, drug dealing, the whole nine yards. Even though my mom was finally able to get out, he still had visitation rights. His family kept on bugging my sister and me, still under 10 years old, to try to convince my mom to talk to him. She finally did try to talk to him when she came to pick us up at the police station from where it was agreed to meet when he had his time with us. They immediately got into an argument. He started throwing one of his temper tantrums, grabbed my mom in front of a cop from the LAPD, trying to beat her, and then the cop grabbed him. He let go of my mom with a look of pure terror on his face. I think that was the day I realized he was sociopathic and didn't want anything else to do with him and his crazy ass Bible thumping family. Story 15. My ex stole a car and did 18 months in state prison. Based on what I was able to find online at the time, he approached a car dealership and showed interest in buying a vehicle. They allowed him to take it home for a 24 hour demo. He never returned it. They reported it stolen after they attempted multiple times to contact him to return it. They then contacted the state police who put a bolo out. They found him driving the vehicle on the other side of the state where he thought he wouldn't be found. I found out when I got an unexpected phone call from the sheriff's office. I asked why they were calling me about this. They said that my ex told them I would vouch for him as a character witness. I told the officer over the phone that my ex was a lying sack of crap and shouldn't be trusted. The officer laughed, thanked me for my time and hung up. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you don't mind sharing with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.